Hello everyone, welcome back for another ASMR session and for today we're gonna discuss and discover 12 of the greatest warriors and military commanders from the past. I'm gonna start from left to right and first in our list is Alexander the Great. Alexander, Sander the Great. Or in Greek it's Megas Alexandros. He was a king of the ancient Greek kingdom of Macedon. Macedon. In his childhood, Alexander the Great was tutored by Aristotle. From the age of 20, he spent most of his ruling years conducting a lengthy military campaign through Western Asia. By the age of 13 he had created one of the largest empires in history, stretching from Greece to Northwest India. The great city of Alexandria in Egypt is named in his honor and was founded by him. He is regarded in history as the only conqueror who never lost a battle. He died on 10 or 11 June 323 BC. He died in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon at age of 32. Alexander the Great is arguably the greatest and bravest warrior of all time. And now it's time to move to the next great warrior. It's about Genghis Khan. He was a Mongol king, so we have Genghis Han. He was born in 1162 and died in 1227. He was the founder and the first great emperor of the Mongol Empire. Mongol Empire known also as the Tatar Empire, Tatar Empire, which became the largest contiguous empire in history after his death in 1227. During his teenage, rival clans abducted both he and his wife and Genghis Khan spent also time as a slave before he dared to escape. Despite, by his early twenties he became himself a formidable warrior and a leader. His exceptional military success made one of the most important conquerors of all time. Unlike many empire builders, Genghis Khan embraced the diversity of new conquered territories. He passed laws declaring religious freedom for all and even granted tax exemption to place of worship. And here is a curious fact. One of his earliest decrees involved the formation of a mounted courier service network known as 
Yum. Yum. This medieval express delivery system consists in a well-organized series of post houses and way station across the empire. So, the first delivery system was made by him. Good to know. Okay, now let's move to the next. The next was a warrior and an army leader. And it's Leonidas, one of Sparta. Leonidas. Of Sparta. Well, he ruled Sparta along with his fellow king, Leotikidas. Leotikidas was the second uh, king of Sparta because Sparta always had two kings. Two kings. Sparta itself had a tradition of training young boys into warriors. Leonidas of Sparta was accompanied by 300 hoplites, 300 hoplites in the Second Persian War at the Battle of Thermopylae, known as the Battle of 300. The Battle. Battle. Of three hundred. Their action immortalized Leonidas, whose bravery was a necessity to prevent the invading Persians. Arthur, according to Pausinias, Sparta, it was where the remains of the legendary king Leonidas were transferred and buried after the Battle of Thermopylae, where was his also was killed. The tomb of Leonidas is the only preserved monument in ancient Agora. Good, now it's time to move to the next warrior in our list. It's about King Richard or Richard the Lionheart. So we have Richard the Lionheart. Or King Richard. He was born in Oxford, England on 8 September 1157 and died on 6 of April 1199. He was a warrior and a commander. He was the commander of the Third Crusade. Commander. Third. Crusade. King Richard's rule in England is largely composed of founding the Crusades. His one true goal was to conquer the Jerusalem. He tried to depose his own father, King Henry, three times. All right, now let's move to the second row. And here we have Vlad the Impaler. Vlad the Impaler. The King of Wallachia, which is now a province from Romania. Vlad the Impaler was born in Transylvania and is one you should be familiar with thanks to the vampires.
The impaler, whose real name was Vlad III, the real name was Vlad the Third Dracula. Or in Romanian, it's Vlad Tsepes. Was born in Transylvania as the Prince of Valachia. He is Bram Stoker's source of inspiration for his novel about vampires, Dracula. Surrounded by enemies that include the Hungarians, Ottomans, and his younger brother, and Valachian in nobility, Vlad employed extremely cruel measures to inspire fear in who opposed him. He earned this nickname by impaling his enemies on stakes to ensure his throne. Vlad tortured his enemies on stake in the ground, impaling them alive. He favored this torture for local and foreign enemies alike. Well, Bram Stoker's Dracula is said to mimic Vlad the Impaler's nature. He was cruel and bloody, despite being a very talented ruler and a great warrior, and managed to withhold the strength of the Ottoman Empire by opposing the Ottoman Empires and defeating in the Ottoman armies in a few battles. By some estimates, he is responsible for the death of more than 80,000 people in his lifetime, a large percent of them by impalement. Now, let's move next. We're gonna talk about Attila the Hun. Attila the Hun. He was born around 4084 and died in 4058 and birthed the Hunic Empire. Hunic Empire. Attila was known to Romans for his brutality, forsaking and pillaging Roman cities. Once Attila rose to power, the first step was to negotiate a treaty with Eastern Roman Empire, in which Emperor Theodosius II agreed to pay 700 pounds of gold as an annual promise of peace. Well, actually, Attila killed his own brother to grab absolute power for himself. He invaded Gaul region just to win himself a wife. He died horribly on his wedding night with the latest bride Ildiko. Attila had suffered a bad nose bleed while laying down and choked himself to the dead with his own blood. Some believed he was poisoned by his own new bride named Eldico. Very, very interesting. Now, let's move to the next one in our list. It's Hannibal Barca. Hannibal. He was one of the greatest warriors and leaders of Carthaginian forces, fought bravely against Rome during the Second Punic War. Second Punic War. He took command of the army when he was 25 years old and he fought in Spain and Gaul. After he marched his massive army across Pyrenees and Alps into central Italy, 
in what will be remembered as one of the most famous campaigns in history against the Romans during during the Italian campaign Hannibal rode an elephant through the swamp of Arno and lost the sight on his right eye from what was probably ophthalmia. He became a one-eyed general. That are some interesting facts about Hannibal. Now it's time to move next. And we have here Saladin. Saladin. Saladin is the western name of Salah al-Din Yusuf ibn Ayyub. Salah al-Din Yusuf. Ibn Ayyub. That's the real entire name. It was he was a Muslim sultan of Egypt and Syria, who famously defeated a massive army of crusaders in the Battle of Hattin. Hattin and captured the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem in 1187. Saladin achieved his success by unifying the Muslim from Egypt and Arabia to brook a potent mix of warfare and the promise of the holy war. He was the famous Muslim hero and a military tactician. Saladin reconquest of Jerusalem in 1187 promoted Pope Gregory VII to organize the Third Crusade. Well, between 1189 and 1192, he, Saladin, lost Acre and Jaffa and was defeated in the field at Arsuf. The Crusader retreated to Europe without seizing Jerusalem, but Saladin's military reputation has been damaged. He died in 1193. 1193. These were the facts about this great Muslim warrior, and now it's time to move to the third, to the third row. And we're gonna talk about a great commando, and his name is Shan Tzu or Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu, ancient Chinese general and strategist. Shan Tzu is legendary military strategist who revolutionized war and combat as we know it today. He won battles by not actually fighting his enemy when it was necessary. He used spies for covert actions and to know tactical information about enemy armies. He is the famous author of the Art of War. Art. Art of War. which was the first treatise on war and studied the art of the military strategies. Shan Tzu served under the Wu state as a general and military tactician around 1770 and 40, 4, 476. His experience in both fields gave way for him to write art of war during the warring states per periods of China. Now, let's move to the next leader and commander 
And here we have Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte. He was a French military commander and political leader who rose to prominence during the French Revolution. He is considered one of the greatest military commanders in history. His wars and campaigns are studied by militaries all over the world. Napoleon launched an invasion of Russia in 18 and 12. So he tried to invade Russia in 18 or 12. The resulting campaign witnesses the catastrophic retreat of Napoleon's Grand Army in 11, in 18 and 30. After he was exiled to the island of Elba between Corsica and Italy. Well, he managed to escape in February 1850 and took control again of the France. The Allies responded by forming a seventh coalition which defeated Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. The Great Battle of Waterloo. In 1815, the British exiled him to a remote island of St. Helena in the Atlantic, where he died at the age of 51 in 1821. 21. These are the curious facts about Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, Let's move to the next in our list, which is a famous figure from the ancient Rome. It's Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar. Caesar was a Roman general and politician who is one of the greatest conquerors of all time, well known for his victory at the Battle of Alesia and conquest of the Gauls. Caesar created the Julian calendar, which is the basis for the calendar we use today in the entire world. Julius Caesar transformed Rome from a republic to an empire. So. Republic of Rome to an empire. Some scholars consider him a tyrant, citing his forceful takeover of Rome and bullying his way to power. Well, actually, Yul Caesar was the first dictator because he named himself dictator of the Roman Empire, a rule that lasts less than one year be before he was famously assassinated by political rivals in the Rome Senate, Rome Senate in 44 BC. I came, I saw, I conquered, or Veni, Vidi, Vici, probably the best known Latin phrase that is can accurately be attributed to Caesar. To Caesar, to Caesar. he wrote Veni, Vidi, Vinci after he conquered the Gauls. Now it's time to move to the last in our list, but not least, and we're gonna talk about George Washington. who was a great commander and army leader and the first president of the United States.
George Washington was born at Pope's Creek in 1732. He is one of the founding fathers and the first president of the United States between 1789, 1789 and 1797. He was a fearless leader in battle and lead Patriot forces or Continental American Army in the American Revolutionary War, known as American Independence War. Washington's bold action saved American Revolution twice. Well, a least known fact is Washington loved parties and the company of women, and he was the first person to, to sign the first United States Constitution. He was anonymously elected president twice. And he was the only slave owning president who freed all the, his slaves after he became the president of United States. And with this, we have finished this session of uh, presenting some of the great figures of warriors and military commanders from our history. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you enjoyed, please hit the subscribe button or give a like and if I miss something or you have some other thoughts about please leave a comment below I want to know your opinion thank you very much for watching and we will see next time bye bye